Today, I'm gonna to be showing you the five best barefoot shoes for barefoot beginners. And not just the five best, but the best beginner shoe for each category and one shoe that you're just going to have to get at some point. Starting with the very best budget barefoot shoe, and that is, of course, the Whiting or Whiting or Whiting or whatever it is. And these come in for as low as 40 US dollars on Amazon. Now, they've got loads of different models and types, but this shoe has been in their lineup for the longest and it's a little bit of a jack of all trades. It can do everything, but where it really excels is training down at the gym and very light trail running. The barefoot base means that you can squat and deadlift really well and also get a lot of feedback through the floor as if you were fully barefoot or wearing socks, which I've seen a lot of people do in the gym. But the big advantage of these over bare feet or just wearing socks is the fact that they are actually shoes. You don't actually have to worry about slipping or losing traction through the lift, nor do you have to worry about being kicked out of the gym for not wearing shoes. The characteristics that make them good in the gym also apply to trail running. They've got a really good grip for light trails. They provide a lot of feedback and they're a really good shoe to start building your mileage up in. Another really nice touch is just how many colors that they've got in these shoes. They've definitely gone for a let's please everyone approach, which at this price point, $40, which is about a quarter of what most barefoot shoes cost, they've done really well. So what about the cons for this shoe? Well, they have got a few. For one, I personally don't think they're that aesthetically appealing, especially when you start digging a little bit deeper and find out those little toe sections are actually just fake and inside it's just like a normal shoe. So this is a little bit like putting exhaust tips onto your Jetta. Then they follow that up by making the laces effectively non-functional, meaning it's basically just a really big slipper ruling out any lateral gym or running movements, which is why I wouldn't recommend these shoes for anything but very light trail running. And the insole. Now, the insole isn't actually a barefoot insole and has in fact got arch support, but if you can take that insole out or replace it and you can get over the other shortcomings, then what you're left with is a very cheap, durable enough barefoot shoe. And although it does come at the expense of sustainable business practices, like we're used to seeing from the team over at Vivo, they could be great for you as something to try out the whole barefoot movement for yourself. But what if there's more to your personality than being a toe bumping, weightlifting gym rat? What if you're a laid back dude that likes to wear shorts and also t-shirts with raccoons on the back of them. Then I've got the shoe for you. Now, this is the Feel Ground Original Knit. And in my opinion, it is the king of cool. What I really like about this shoe is how well they've managed to bypass the typical clown shoe aesthetic with that really wide toe box that you've started seeing in a lot of barefoot shoes by using this elevated gum sole that gives it the aesthetic of the traditional gum shoe like a van, but without sacrificing that barefoot experience, which is harder to do than you might think. Numbers wise, the outsole on this shoe is only five millimeters thick, which doesn't make it the thinnest of the day, but it does provide a lot of sensory feedback, which is something that you really do want in a barefoot shoe. And it manages to do that while still being comfortable enough to wear all day walking around town or in a city. And although I was a little bit hesitant about the sole on these at first, it turns out they do provide a lot of traction. And as you can see, they're wearing really well. This is one of those rare shoes that looks great, feels great and at 114 US dollars positions itself very nicely in the middle of barefoot shoe pricing. Yes, you pay more than the Wittins, but for that, you get a much better thought out product, which is made from better materials that will last you a lot longer. And right now, while I am shooting this video, they're actually on sale for just 91 US dollars, which in my opinion is a great price for what you get. I will put a link for them down in the description below this video, as well as all the other shoes in case you wanna check those out. Cons wise, there's only one thing that I don't like about the original knit, and that is the lacing. The eyelets on these aren't very spread out at all. Now that does give the shoe its look, but if you're going through an airport where you're gonna be taking your shoes off and on and off and on and off and on again, don't wear these. But if you're not gonna be doing that, these are a fantastic shoe. But what about if budget is no issue? What if you are a busy businessman pacing the office of your Fortune 500 company, closing deal after deal after deal, all while craving the undeniable bliss of the earth under your foot? Well, sir, fear not, because we have got what you need. This is the Vivo Barefoot Gobi. This is a handcrafted men's leather desert boot that is made for foot loose living. And they genuinely have written that on their website. Love that. 
Anyway, this smart casual boot comes in at a steamy $185, but it is worth it. It's timeless, it's super easy to dress up and down, the leather is fantastic quality, it's sustainably sourced, it's got a cork insole in here as well with a rather lovely 0.8 millimeter puncture resistant finish. It means wherever you choose to go, you'll be looking stylish and you're not gonna have holes in your feet, which I find quite a nice feature. We like that almost as much as you are liking this video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. So does the Gobi have any cons? No, when you paid that much money, you don't get cons. And even if you did, you can actually send these shoes back anytime as part of Vivo's 100 day trial policy, even if you have worn them loads and loads, which is both super helpful and convenient and what I expect as the CEO of a small YouTube channel. That said, if you do decide to get yourself a pair, make sure you look after them as you would any other leather product. Give them a clean every now and then and show them a little bit of love with some beeswax, something like this, so that they stay waterproof and the finish will last and last and last. It doesn't take much effort and it really pays off for the longevity of the boot. But let's say that you finish your busy day in the office and you are finally ready to head down to the gym and blow off some steam. What are the best beginner shoes for training? Well, we can't do this video and not talk about the Primus Lights. Now, these shoes are as barefoot as they get. They've got a two millimeter performance outsole, which is so thin and so flexible you wouldn't believe, but they do add the same 0.8 millimeter puncture resistant finish as the Gobi for a total of three millimeters, still making it the thinnest shoe in this class. If you ever get hands on with them, it is insane how thin these things are. They literally pitch you straight onto the ground which makes them amazing for all forms of lifting. You're just constantly being fed so much feedback. I'm a strength conditioning coach and having these has really been a big game changer for me in the gym. And unlike the Wittins, these are also really good for the lateral movements, so moving side to side. They will definitely test your stability when you're just starting out, but they are awesome shoes when it comes to lifting, barefoot running, particularly on road, running tracks, that sort of thing. That said, these are not cheap shoes. These come in at 170 US dollars. They are at the upper end of what barefoot shoes cost, but that is for a reason. They are incredibly durable. They are very hard wearing. And although I do need to throw them in the washing machine every now and then, which I should probably have done before this video, they have suffered successfully through four long years with me thumping around with minimal maintenance and they're still going strong. And although they excel in the gym, you really can wear them anywhere and do anything in them. And at some point in your barefoot, journey you need to try these shoes out for yourself but it's up to you to decide if at the start of your journey these are overkill and something cheaper like the field grounds will suit you better now while you're still finding your feet if you do decide to pull the trigger just remember that even though these are great shoes they are also the most minimal barefoot shoes possible making them the hardest to master that said as a beginner none of these shoes will seem easy so if you want to get into barefoot running but you need a hand getting started. I'm gonna be running a four week strength project called the five kilometer personal best starting October 18th. Now, this is something that we as a channel do every six months to a year, and it's your opportunity to work directly with me in a small community setting. In this case, the goal is to set a new five kilometer PB or run your first 5K when we test as a group on November 18th. This is an online event. It's open to both barefoot beginners and veterans. You can pre-register today by following the link up here or down in the description below. And if you're watching this video after October 18th, you can register for our next event on the same link. The very last category for today is adventure. And this is a hard category to judge as there are just so many great options out there from Vivo and Zero and all the big barefoot brands. But as this is beginner barefoot shoes, I'm gonna make an outside call here and lean towards the Ultra Lone Peak. This is neither a hiking boot nor a traditional barefoot shoe, but it is the most friendly beginner option. And that's because it carries all the hallmarks of a great barefoot shoe with a wide toe box to let your toes splay out. It's zero drop. It's got a very responsive midsole, but it adds in an extra 25 millimeters of cushioning across the footbed. Now, some of you might not like that, and I very much understand why, but if you're new to adventure hiking, you're probably gonna be pushing your body enough as it is just covering long distances over uneven terrain. And if you're brand new to barefoot shoes, or even if you're a seasoned veteran, 
that cushioning can be a godsend that can literally make or break your hike particularly if you're doing multiple days back to back. Despite this being a trail running shoe, the very aggressive lug patterns afford incredible grip on a wide variety of terrain. And as the cushioning is minimal, that grip coupled with its very high level of ground feel gives you a very, very sure-footed experience. Plus, as Ultra is a more mainstream company, you actually end up spending less than you might think on this level of performance with these shoes coming in at 140 US dollars. Let me know what you think of the Ultra down in the comments below. And if there's a shoe that you think is better suited for beginner barefoot adventures, let me know what it is. Don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing to the channel so that you stay up to date on barefoot training and review content. And here is a video that you should check out next. Thanks for watching.